Hello, I'm Mandy Eubanks. I'm a certified yoga therapist and trauma-informed teacher. I've been teaching yoga for 15 years. Trauma-informed yoga may help you calm your nervous system and help you regain control of your thoughts, emotions, and behavior. With consistent practice over time, you may find that you have an increase in your overall well-being and you're able to tolerate stressful situations. In other words, what used to bother you no longer has the same negative effect and you're experiencing more ease in your everyday life. Watch this video and do these practices that I'm going to teach you if you have stress, anxiety, depression, or have been diagnosed with PTSD. It's especially helpful to follow along and do these practices even if you don't feel up to it so that you can experience for yourself the transformative effects of yoga. So research has shown that one of the fastest ways to shift our state and initiate the relaxation response is through the exhalation and lengthening the breath. So for this reason, we'll start off our yoga practice with a breathing exercise. So you can find any comfortable position. You can do this sitting down, lying, or kneeling like I am, and you'll use your hands. So just take a moment here and place your hands on either side of your face. And if you'd like, you can close your eyes or take a soft gaze downwards. Notice how nurturing this feels to have your hands on your face. Notice the sensation in your hands. Notice the sensation of your hands on your face. Now here, take a deep inhale through your nose and exhale through pursed lips like you're blowing out a candle, but slower. Do that again. And two more times, inhale, and inhale all the way down into your belly. Very slowly, exhale through pursed lips. Repeat that one more time. Keeping your eyes closed, rest your hands in your lap or on a surface in front of you and just notice how you feel. Notice experience of calm, warmth in your body, maybe even tingling sensations. And then open your eyes. Now we're gonna do this again and you can repeat what we just did if you find that's more comfortable for you, or we're going to add a count to the breath. And so remember, when we exhale longer than we inhale, we initiate the relaxation response. So with this variation, you may keep your hands on your face, just like we did a moment ago, or take one of your hands, the palm of your hands, about six inches in front of your lips so that when you blow through pursed lips into the palm of your hands, you have that sensation. So we'll inhale to a count of four and exhale blowing into the palm of the hands to an eight count. And we'll do this five times. So to start out, again, you can close your eyes Place one hand on your face and the other hand about six to eight inches in front of your lips. Take a moment here again and just feel the sensation within your hands, the sensation of your hand touching your face. And if you'd like, you can even lean your chin down and your face into your hand and feel how nurturing that is. And then together here, we'll start with a four count inhale through the nose and an eight count exhale, blowing through pursed lips. Eight 
Inhale. And blowing out through pursed lips. Now keep going and do this on your own three more times. When you inhale, expand into your belly. When you exhale, very gently release the breath from the lungs. When you inhale, expand your inner body. And as you initiate the long exhalation, feel relaxation and sensations of ease in your whole body. The next time that you exhale, you can rest your hands in your lap or on the surface in front of you, keeping your eyes closed or softly open. Pause here and notice how you feel. Notice sensations of ease, relaxation, calmness, and peace. Next, we'll move into the posture practice of this video. I want to start with showing you what we call in trauma-informed yoga, touchstone poses. These are poses that you can do any time during this practice if you start to feel overwhelmed, agitated, frustrated, or disconnected from your body. So if you need to, at any point, pause this video Perform one of these touchstone poses, and then when you feel better and when you feel ready, you can return to the practice. So the first pose that we'll do is called mountain pose. And this is a grounding pose, and you can do this anytime in your everyday life when you feel the need to center and self-regulate. So you'll begin by taking a nice wide wide stance with your feet about outer hip width distance and your palms either down by your side or facing forward. You can even turn your fingers, curl your fingers into your palm and insert your thumbs so your fingers wrap around your thumbs. This is a mudra or a hand gesture that's known to decrease anxiety. So as you stand here, you're welcome to close your eyes, or if you'd like, keep your eyes softly open, but with a downward gaze and pick a spot on the floor to focus on. And there's no movement in this practice. Instead, you're just feeling, especially your feet. Notice the sensation of your feet pressing down into the floor and the floor rising up to support your body. Lengthen up through the crown of your head. Feel your sturdiness. Feel steadfastness. Now bring in an awareness of your breath. And just like we did in the previous breathing exercise, make your exhale a little bit longer than your inhale. And then you can relax and be at ease and stand as you normally would. So the next touchstone pose that I want to introduce to you is a standing forward bend. And you can use a chair or a countertop or even a desk to perform this pose. So you'll want to bend your knees and as you fold forward, shift your hips back behind you and keep your spine nice and long. Place your hands on the surface of the chair or the countertop and then walk your feet back. So you can do this with straight arms 
Or if you have the flexibility in your hamstrings, you can cross your forearms and rest your forehead onto your forearms. In this gentle inversion, this may lower your blood pressure, may calm your nervous system. And as you hold this for a few more breaths, notice sensations of stretching through the back of your body, maybe feeling a little bit of pressure behind the eyes in this gentle inversion. Know that your experience is perfect and normal, whatever is happening. And then to come out of this, place your hands on the surface, gently straighten your arms and pause for just a moment. And then slowly come all the way up to standing. If you're feeling a little bit dizzy, just bend your knees and place your hands on the tops of your thighs. And then you'll return to standing just as you normally would. So the third touchstone pose is called chair pose or fierce pose. And this is really a great pose to do if you want to get back in your body during this practice. So if you start to feel like you're checking out. So you perform this pose by bending your knees again, just like you did in the last one. But this time, keeping your chest lifted, raise your arms overhead. And then you can choose to stay here or set your hips down a little further towards the ground and back behind you as if you were going to sit in a chair. Reach up through your fingertips and notice sensations of engagement and strength and work in your legs. If you feel any pressure in your lower spine, lean forward a little more. Stay here for as long as you can until you feel back in your body. And as you're ready, straighten through your knees and relax your arms by your side and again stand as you normally would. So the final touchstone pose is called Eagle Pose. And this is where we cross the midline of the body. This helps bring our brain into focus, especially if we're feeling agitated, frustrated, or withdrawn. So this pose is performed by crossing the legs and crossing the arms. And I wanna show you seated and a standing version. So if you are seated, you can sit on the very, very edge of a chair. And you can cross your ankles or cross above your knees. You reach your arms towards out to the side and then cross at your elbows and bring the back of your palms together. And then extend your arms out to the side and uncross your legs and go right into the second side, crossing your left thigh or left ankle and this time, your left arm goes under your right, bringing the back of your palms together. Stay here. Notice your breath. Reach your arms wide apart and uncross your legs. Relax your arms down by your side. Now you can repeat this seated, or if you'd like to try the standing version, Stand in mountain pose, just as we did earlier. Gently bend your knees and cross your left thigh over your right. Reach your arms out to the side and bring your right elbow under your left and the back of your hands together. Now you'll notice you have to work a little bit harder to balance here. It's a balancing pose. Notice how your mind has to focus in the present moment. Take another few moments here as you work within this pose. 
and then reach your arms wide apart, uncross your legs, and come back to mountain pose. And we'll go right into the second side, crossing your right thigh over your left with a slight bend in your knees. Reach your arms out to the side. And then cross your left, sorry, right arm underneath your left as you bring the back of your palms together. Notice how you have to work a little harder here to maintain your balance. And this helps bring focus to your mind. Reach your arms wide apart, uncross your legs, and come back to mountain pose. So the final touchstone pose is called child's pose. And you'll do, get into it by gently bending your knees, bringing your hands to the floor and walking your feet back so you're on all fours, hands and knees. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this depending on your hip and knee flexibility and comfort. So the first way I'm going to show you is you bring your forearms down and your hips stay over your knees. This is perfect if you have hip and knee discomfort. And just allow your head to hang. And if you'd like, you can experience taking the hips back slightly to see how that feels. Now another variation of the pose if you have hip and knee flexibility is to take the top of your feet to the floor Bring your toes together and walk your knees apart. And then your hips may or may not touch, but you'll start to gently press your hips back towards your heels. There's no forcing here, there's no effort. Instead, you're just working with your natural range of motion. Remember, this is a pose that's meant to help calm you. We're not necessarily going for um, flexibility here. So if you can, bringing the hips towards the heels, and then you'll rest your forehead onto the floor. Another option is, is you can place a blanket or a rolled towel underneath your forehead. Take a few moments here to find a comfortable place. And then initiate your relaxation response by inhaling to a count of four and exhaling to an eight count. You keep track of your breath. And you'll do this until you feel ready, until you feel back in your body, calm and at ease. And as you're ready, you can walk your hands back to lift your head and just take a moment to pause and notice how you feel. So now we're going to move into our more dynamic posture practice. The first thing we'll do is a couple of practices that help us manage anger or frustration. We just feel like we have to get some energy out. So you'll start off by coming into mountain pose, one of our touchstone poses and standing with your feet a comfortable distance apart with your arms relaxing down by your sides. Notice if your shoulders are scrunched up towards your ears, soften through your shoulders, soften through your jaw, soften through your fingertips, even soften through your knees so there's a slight bend. And then we'll just start to lean from side to side. These are called monkey stretches. Notice sensations of stretching through the side of your body. You might even let your head lean a little side to side, if that's okay on your neck. This is a great practice to do if you just feel like you can't sit still. You've got some energy to burn off you feel angry or frustrated. Keep going for about 30 more seconds. And then start to slow 
the movement down. Make the movement from side to side a little bit smaller. And then finally, coming to the center, back into Dasana. And you can close your eyes or keep a soft gaze downwards and just notice how you feel. The next one we'll do is called elephant swings. So you'll stand with your feet apart a little bit wider and your toes slightly turned out. So make sure you feel grounded and like you have your balance. Your arms will relax by your side and even shake them out just a little bit to make sure that they're completely relaxed. And then we'll start and I'll show you the legs, the knees and the hips first and then we'll add the arms. So when we're turning, we're shifting and the whole leg is turning to the side. So this protects our knees and our ankles. So if you'd like, you can always hold on to the side of a counter or place your hands on the wall until you get this movement down. And then the arms will add on. So the arms will start to swing in the direction of the hips. And you'll want to keep your eyes open for this one so you maintain good balance here. And keep your eyes as if they were scanning a horizon. So this also helps you keep your balance as you do this movement. Maybe pick up the pace and go a little bit faster. Noticing how energized you feel as you do this. Maybe even putting a smile on your face. And then start to slow the movement down. Even slower. And then coming back into Tadasana Mountain Pose. And this time, interlace your fingers. Let your palms rest either in your lap if you feel like you need to sit down. Or stand here, keeping your eyes softly open. Notice how you feel. Especially notice tingling sensations in your body, warmth, maybe even happiness and joy. That movement is particularly playful and it's easy to smile when you do it. So the next postures that we'll do focus on balance and these are known to calm your mind and focus your mind and bring you into the present moment. So the first one we'll do seated. You can do this on the floor or you can sit on a chair. I'm going to show you the variation on the floor. So we'll come to seated <clears throat> cross your ankles crossing at your shins. It might be helpful to sit on a blanket if you feel like your back is really rounded here, but we won't be here for long, so you should be fine. So start off by placing your hands out like a V, your fingertips beside you. And we'll just start to lean from side to side, kind of like what we did in our monkey stretches. Now, the next time that you lean over to your left, lift your right hip off the floor. And then come back through center, lean to your right, lift your left hip off the floor. And when you feel comfortable, and when you feel ready, you'll place your hands onto your knees. This time, as you lean to your right, lifting your left hip, see if you can pause, balance here. So you're balancing on one sit bone. And then come back through center, and going to your other side, leaning onto your left hip, lifting your right, balancing on your left sit bone. Now keep doing this for a few moments. You can also try this variation if you'd like by bringing the bottoms of your feet together and your knees apart. And then trying the same thing, leaning to one side, 
finding your balance. Coming back through center, leaning to the other side. Do that one more time, finding your balance on each side. And then come back to the middle so both hips are on the ground. Extend your knees in front of you. If you're sitting on a chair, you can also stretch out your legs. So a little stretch here through the back of the legs, back of the knees. You might notice some stretching sensation. And then we'll transition up to standing. So you might want to grab the back of a chair or be near a wall for this next balancing pose. This is called tree pose. You'll start in mountain pose with your feet a comfortable distance apart so you feel grounded, you feel connected, you feel supported. You can start by bringing your palms together in front of your heart. Be aware of the midline of your body, so bring all of your attention to this midline of your body. If you know you're going to need balance, help with balance. You can go ahead and place your hand either on a chair or a wall and start to lean into your right leg, lifting your left. If you'd like to try to balance with no hands, bring both hands in front of your heart. Your body won't be completely still. You'll notice some wobbling and some shaking. That's okay. Just notice how present your mind is. Take a couple more moments here. If you fall out of it, that's fine. Come right back into it. Remember, use the support of the wall or the chair anytime you need to. Take one more breath here. Good, and then relax your arms. Place your foot back on the ground and come back into Tadasana Mountain Pose. So we'll do Tree Pose on the second side. As you're ready, shift your weight over into your left leg. Your hands can be in front of your heart or one hand can be on the wall or a chair. Lifting your right foot up, bending at the knee, find your balance. If you'd like, bring both hands in front of your heart. Again, welcome your body swaying, wobbling, maybe even shaking. If you need to take a moment to regain your balance with both feet on the floor, take it and then come back into the pose. Spend a few more moments here playing with your balance. And then release your arms, lower your foot to the floor, and come back into mountain pose. Enjoy a breath here. Notice how you feel. So sometimes when we experience trauma, we experience disassociation from our body. And these next practices are meant to help us regain that connection to our body. So we'll focus on our breath and matching our movement to the breath. So this will be a really dynamic practice. We'll start off seated. So you can either do this in a chair, seated cross-legged, or I'm gonna show you a kneeling posture. So we'll begin with bringing the arms together and the palms right in front of the face. And if you can touch the elbows, this will be your inhale. And then on your exhale, bring your arms out to the side, lifting your chest. Good as you inhale, bring your forearms together and it may be even rounding your back and you might even close your eyes. 
And then as you exhale, open the eyes, lift your gaze, bring the arms out to the side. Do that one more time as you inhale, breathe into your back body, bringing your arms together, chin maybe even towards your chest. And then as you exhale, open through the arms, lifting your chin and lifting your gaze. Bring your arms back together as you inhale. And then let your arms just rest in your, on your side or palms in your lap. So we'll do that again, but we're going to reverse the breath so that way you can experience what feels better to you. So starting again with the arms together, palms together, and then the elbows touch if you can. Go ahead and empty your breath here. And as you inhale, separate the arms, lift your chest, and lift your gaze. As you exhale, Bring the palms together, round through your back, and tuck your chin, maybe even closing your eyes. Inhale, open the arms, lift your gaze, maybe even smile. And as you exhale, bring the hands, the elbows together, chin to chest, rounding the back. Twice more, inhale as you open. Exhale, bring the arms together. One more big inhale. And exhale, bringing the arms together. Then you can relax your arms and pause for a moment. Notice sensations of warmth in your shoulders, maybe openness across your chest. Now we'll transition to all fours, hands and knees. So you want to bring your hands a little bit forward of your shoulders so your arms are at an angle. This keeps some of the pressure off of your wrist. At any time, if this doesn't feel good to your wrist, you can always come down onto your forearms. You'll extend your right knee behind you with your toes tucked under. Now this is a balancing pose too. So when you're ready, lift your toes up and away from the ground. If that doesn't feel good on your lower back, you can keep your toes tucked down. So with your foot either lifted or toes down, you'll extend the opposite arm in front of you. So my right leg is lifting and my left arm is extending. Notice how much you have to concentrate to hold this pose. Notice the muscular engagement. Take another moment here, big deep breath, and then as you exhale, lower your hand and your knee back to the ground. We'll go right into the second side, extend your left leg behind you. Take a moment here and notice if you prefer the leg lifted or the toes down. And when you're ready, lift your right arm and extend it in front of you. Take a few moments here and notice how dynamic this posture is, how much you have to concentrate to hold it. When you're ready, lower your hand, lower your knee, and take a moment and pause. So now we're going to make this a little bit more dynamic. You'll extend your right leg behind you, extend your left arm in front of you. This is your inhale. And on your exhale, pull your elbow towards your side and draw your knee into your chest. Do this three times. Inhale, extend. Exhale, elbow to your side, knee to chest. Big inhale, extend, reach. Exhale, draw in. One more time. Inhale, reach. Exhale, draw in. And back to all fours. Let's do that on the second side. Extending your left leg behind you, right arm in front of you. Exhale, draw your elbow to your side, knee to your chest. Inhale, extend. Exhale, draw in. Inhale, extend. Exhale, draw in. Twice more, inhale. 
exhale big inhale reach and exhale draw in come back to all fours good you might take a moment and stretch your wrist shake out your hands so the next one we'll do is a movement through the spine you'll come back to all fours and again taking your hands in front of your shoulders so there's less pressure and this is a great one to also do on your forearms so as you're ready we'll move the spine with the breath on your inhale you'll lift your chin and you'll lift your tailbone and hips up towards the sky so that you have an arch in your back as you exhale bring your chin to your chest press the ground away so you round your upper back and drop your tailbone towards the ground inhale lift your chin as you lift your tailbone exhale drop your chin as you drop your tailbone so your goal here is to match your movement with your breath inhaling as you extend exhaling as you round your back now do this two more times trying to slow down the breath and slow down the movement And after you exhale the next time, come back to a neutral position on all fours. So this next one will revisit child's pose. And you'll start with your knees apart and your toes together. Your hips can either set all the way back towards your heels if you have that flexibility, or they'll be lifted. I like to roll my sticky mat up so I have a little bit of padding underneath my knees for this one. And you can also use a towel or a blanket, whatever you have around. <clears throat> so we'll start by walking the hands forward into the child's pose position. So while you're here in child's pose, this will be your exhale. So empty all of the air out of your lungs. On your inhale, Press down through your shins and the tops of your feet as you lift your hips, rise up, reaching through your arms, reaching through your fingertips, and even lifting your gaze. On your exhale, reach the hips back down towards the heels, hands to the ground. Inhale, lifting up. And exhale to lower down. So your goal here is to experience matching the movement with the breath. So the postures are dynamic and synced up with your inhale and exhale. One more round, inhaling to reach up and exhaling to lower down and pause here in child's pose for a couple of breaths. Noticing how you feel sensations of warmth, and maybe even tingling throughout your body as you regain that connection. And walking your hands back towards your knees to lift your chest up. I'm going to unroll my mat here because the next posture we'll do, we'll do, we'll take the full length of the mat. So we'll start off in hands and knees with the hands slightly forward and you'll curl your toes under. So the first movement we will do is the cow pose, lifting your chin and lifting your tailbone. On your exhale, you'll lift your knees up and press through your hands as you reach your hips up and back. And this is downward facing dog. Now we'll move in and out of that in a dynamic way, inhaling, lowering your knees, lifting your chin. 
exhaling, lifting your hips, pressing into your hands. Remember, you can go back into any one of those touchstone poses that I taught you at the beginning of this practice. Anytime you feel the need to center, ground, And do this one a couple more times, inhaling to lower your knees, exhaling to lift your hips, noticing the work in your arms, how strong and capable your body is. And the next time that you lift your knees and hips, pause here in Downward Facing Dog. You can always come into child's pose or all fours, hands and knees while we hold this posture. And as you stay here, notice the sensation of stretching through the back of your legs. Notice the strength of your arms, maybe some warmth in your shoulders. And you're just noticing without judgment. So these are just all opportunities to regain connection and trust in our body. And then you can walk your hands back to your feet. So you're in a standing forward fold. You can always place your hands onto a surface in front of you, grabbing your chair, or take your forearms to the tops of your thighs. If you have the flexibility, your hands can touch the floor. Remember, our goal here is not flexibility. It's to feel how these postures and these practices make an inner shift. Notice sensations of stretching in the back of your body, just sensation without judgment. Feel your feet pressing into the ground. Notice your breath. And then as you're ready, Gently come up to standing, nice and slow. If you're dizzy, keep your knees bent and your chin slightly tucked. And as you're ready, lift the chin, lift your gaze, returning back to mountain pose. Noticing how you feel. Maybe noticing a lightness yet a steadiness and strength in your body. So bringing your hands in front of your heart. On your inhale, reach your arms over your head. As you exhale, slightly bend your knees as you lean your chest forward, either placing your hands on your thighs, the front of your shins, or all the way to the floor. Inhale just halfway, extending and lengthening through the crown of your head. And exhale as you fold again. Inhale, come all the way up to standing. Reach your arms overhead, bring your palms together. And exhale, draw your hands down in front of your heart. We'll do that two more times. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale. Bend forward with bent knees, hands to thighs, shins, or ground. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthening through the front of your body. Exhale as you forward fold. Press into your feet as you inhale, rise up, palms together. Exhale, hands to your heart, long exhale. Let's slow the movement down just a little bit more. Inhale, reach your arms overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold again. Inhale, reach your arms up, palms together. 
exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, reach your arms overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Walk your hands forward till you're back in downward facing dog. Pausing here for a few moments or lowering your knees and pausing here or taking child's pose. Enjoy two deep breaths here wherever you are, either in down dog, hands and knees, or child's pose. So as you're ready, you can lift up and then come to standing. You can take a wide stance on your mat. So these next postures are the hero postures. They're really big movements, and so we'll combine a dynamic movement in coordination with our breath, and we'll also hold the postures a little bit, so see how that feels. So when you're ready, you'll turn your right toes to face the short side of your mat, bend your knee so it's over the ankle. If it goes past the ankle, just widen your stance. So checking your alignment, Reach your arms out to the side. Take an in-breath here. And then as you exhale, lower your forearm to your thigh and reach your arm overhead. Inhale back into arms out to the side. And as you exhale, side angle. One more time, inhale, arms to the side, lifting your torso. Exhale, side angle. Now pause here. Press down into your feet, reach through your top arm. Notice a stretch to the side of your body. You can look forward. If you need a little bit more support with your balance, go ahead and look at the ground. Take one more breath here. Now with your top hand, reach to the sky and draw yourself all the way back up to standing. You can rest your hands on your hips and we'll go to the second side. Turn your right toes in, turn your left toes out to face the short side of your mat. Inhale, reach your arms up, and as you exhale, bend your knee. Look down and check and make sure your knee isn't past your ankle. If it is, take a wider stance. Take your in breath here. As you exhale, bring your forearm to your thigh and reach your top arm alongside your ear. Inhale, lift your torso, arms to the side. Exhale, side angle. Inhale, back up. Exhale as you lean. One more time, inhale, back up. And this time as you exhale and lean to the side, stay here. Continue breathing slowly and deeply. Press down into your feet, reach through your top fingers, and if you'd like, keep your gaze forward or slightly downwards to the ground. Enjoy one more breath here. And to come up, first reach your hand towards the sky and pull yourself all the way up to standing. Turn your toes forward. Walk your feet back towards each other, standing in mountain pose. We'll do one more like that. So once again, you'll widen your feet apart. This time you'll turn your whole body and your toes to face the short side of the mat to your right. You can start with your hands on your hips, bending your right knee. Again, check to make sure when you bend your knee, it doesn't go forward of your ankle. Bending the knee, reach your arms overhead. This will be your inhale. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, take the arms down as you straighten through the right knee. Inhale as you reach your arms up. Exhale, lower your arms and straighten through the knee. Twice more like that. Inhale, lift. 
Exhale, lower and straighten. This last time, inhale, lift your arms, bend your knees, knee and stay here for a few moments. Find a gaze, a still point, maybe on the wall in front of you to help with your balance. Notice sensations of strength and lengthening through your body. Take one more moment here as you fully embody this pose. And then straighten through your knee, relax your arms, and we'll go right into the second side. So carefully turn your whole body to face the opposite side of the mat. Bend your left knee, and again, make sure that your stance is an appropriate length so your knee isn't going in forward in front of your ankle. Lift your arms up. And as you exhale, lower your arms and straighten your knee. Three more times like that. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower and straighten. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower and straighten. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower your arms and straighten. And on this next one, we'll hold. Bending the knee, reach your arms overhead. Find a still point to fix your gaze. Notice all sensations in your body. Welcome them just as they are. And when you're ready, straighten your knee, relax your arms, and return back to mountain pose. So when you're ready, you'll come back to the floor in a comfortable seat, or you can sit in the chair. So we're moving into final relaxation. It's really important to take the time at the end of your practice to calm your nervous system and let your body be at complete rest. If you need to, pause this video and do a couple rounds of Kaki breath that we did at the beginning of the practice to make sure that you're completely and totally calm and at ease so you get the most out of your restorative rest. Close your eyes here for just a few moments and turn your attention inwards. Yoga helps us get back in touch with the wisdom of our body, helps calm the mind and regulate the nervous system. Notice how you feel right now. Any subtle or obvious shifts or changes in your mood, the way that you feel in your body since the beginning of this practice. Notice. And then as you're ready, you can open your eyes and we'll transition to lying down. You can also stay seated or sitting in a chair. And we'll take a few moments of constructive rest. So if you are lying down, separate the feet apart, rest the knees together, and then you can cross the arms over the chest as if you were giving yourself a hug. Feel how nourishing this embrace is. And closing your eyes here if you feel comfortable. Taking a few moments to receive the benefits of your practice. Feel free to pause this video and stay here as long as you'd like. 
even 10 to 15 minutes to really receive the benefits. And then as you're ready, you have to open your eyes and move your body any way that feels good to you. Roll your wrist, wiggle your fingers, maybe stretch out your legs and reach your arms overhead. Full body stretch. And bend your knees. You can roll to one side and press yourself up to seated. If you'd like, join your hands together in front of your heart and close your eyes. Take a moment to thank yourself for practicing self-care today. It's an honor to share these practices with you. Namaste.